northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, the furthest point from any coastline, is harvesting something unusual. This isn't the kind of place where you'd expect life to thrive. It's dry, cracked earth under an unforgiving sun. It's a sea of shifting sand that stretches beyond the horizon. No ocean breeze, no freshwater rivers, just silence, wind, and heat. Thanks to the improving ecological environment in the Lop Nur Lake area, freshwater fish breeding became possible in the desert. But deep in China's northwest, something impossible is happening. Here, in one of the harshest deserts on Earth, China is farming seafood. Not just any seafood, shrimp, crabs, and even pearls. Dead Sea is one of the world's natural wonders. Its high salt and mineral levels are said to have healing powers. Welcome to the Taklamakan Desert, a place once known only as the Sea of Death, now rising as an unlikely epicenter of aquatic life and green innovation. The place farthest from the sea, far away from ocean tides and salty air, there's a corner of China that feels forgotten by water. It's called Xinjiang, a massive stretch of land tucked against Mongolia and Kazakhstan. This place is dry, rugged, and unforgiving. With endless deserts and mountains rising like broken stone waves, it's hard to imagine anyone calling it home. And yet, millions do. But here's the strange part. In the most remote city on Earth, Urumqi, which sits farther from the ocean than any other city, China chose to begin something bold. Not in a green valley or near a river. No, they picked the Taklamakan Desert, a name that means go in and never come out. This is a place known for violent sandstorms, blistering heat, and an eerie silence. Rain barely falls here. The air itself feels tired. Still, something unexpected was taking shape. Beneath that sunburnt land, a quiet transformation had already begun. In an area where crops struggle and the land cracks from thirst, water was being pumped into artificial ponds. Not for drinking and not for farming wheat. For fish, it sounds impossible, even ridiculous. But what China saw in Xinjiang wasn't emptiness. They saw an opportunity, a challenge, a frontier waiting to be reimagined. And in the heart of the world's most unwelcoming terrain, they started building an ocean where there had never been one. The switch that changed everything. It didn't start with fanfare or fireworks. It began quietly, with a few hands pressing buttons on a control panel in the middle of nowhere. In the heart of the Taklamakan Desert, where the ground is dry and the winds scream through the dunes, water filled into man-made pools. Then came the fish, not desert fish, sea fish, golden sea bream, mud skippers, even grouper. They arrived as tiny fry, barely visible, and were released into shimmering ponds that looked like mirages against the barren land. Within minutes, they darted through the water, already fighting over food. Something was happening here that defied logic, but this wasn't a miracle. It was the result of years of planning and precision. Each pond was controlled with careful technology. The temperature, salt levels, oxygen, all balanced like a delicate recipe. The fish didn't just survive, they thrived. The survival rate soared to levels nobody thought possible. It was a beginning, a bold one. In a region once seen as lifeless, Xinjiang was taking a gamble. By turning desert basins into artificial seas, it was rewriting its own future. Not with grand speeches, but with quiet ripples. This was more than an experiment. It was proof. Proof that with the right idea, even the harshest places can grow something new. Salty waters, sweeter future. The Taklamakan isn't known for kindness. It's called the Sea of Death for a reason. Now, we just know the Dead Sea is the Dead Sea. Nothing lives here. It's full of salt. But things are happening here. But beneath its endless waves of sand lies something curious. Water. Not fresh and pure, but thick with salt and minerals. For generations, that water was dismissed. Too alkaline, too corrosive, too strange. Then someone asked, could this water, so often ignored, become an asset? Scientists believed it could. With help from southern China's Guangdong province, they began modifying these salty desert lakes. They added natural minerals, magnesium, potassium, calcium. Not to purify the water, but to recreate the sea. And it worked. Suddenly, the desert's bad water became seawater in disguise. The desert had more to offer, too. Blazing sunlight by day, cold winds at night. These extremes, which once seemed like problems, became advantages. 
Some fish grow faster in these conditions. Even sandstorms couldn't stop them, thanks to a weather system that warns farmers before danger hits. Wind, heat, even temperature drops, all predicted, tracked, and managed. To keep fish healthy, engineers designed smart systems that stabilized pond temperatures. Machines adjusted warmth automatically, even as the desert roasted or froze. The result? Stable, thriving ecosystems in the middle of nowhere. What once looked like failure, salt, storms, heat, now built the foundation for a new economy, not by changing the land, but by understanding it. Water without rain. You might be wondering, how is any of this even possible without rain? After all, this is the Taklamakan Desert, a place where clouds rarely show, and when they do, they don't bring much. Less than four inches of rain fall here each year. That's not enough to grow a lawn, let alone raise millions of fish. But Xinjiang's secret lies in what most never see. Below the surface and along its fringes, the desert hides unexpected water sources. There are reservoirs, underground aquifers, and even a few rivers that haven't yet disappeared into sand. In total, over 2,100 square miles of water lie scattered across the region. That's more than just a lucky break. It's a lifeline. Still, this water isn't ideal. It's salty and alkaline, often considered unusable for drinking or farming. But scientists didn't try to fight that. They leaned into it. By analyzing the mineral content, they figured out how to adjust the chemistry. A few trace elements later, and Xinjiang had its own version of seawater. This made the impossible possible. Now, those harsh inland waters support ecosystems that resemble coastal ones. Tiny organisms began multiplying. These became food for fry. Lakes once seen as sterile suddenly had life. It's not that the desert changed. It's that people finally understood how to work with what was already there. When science met sand. The idea of raising seafood in a desert still feels like something out of fiction, but it wasn't wishful thinking that made it real. It was science. At the heart of Xinjiang's aquaculture revolution was a single goal, to make desert water behave like seawater. That meant chemistry had to step in. Researchers began by testing the saline alkaline water that filled these desert lakes. On paper, it was bad news, high salt content, strange mineral balance, poor oxygen levels. But instead of cleaning it, they decided to enhance it. They introduced ions like calcium and potassium, harmless, cheap, and effective. These elements transformed the water's profile, making it resemble the ocean in just the right ways. This artificial seawater was a game changer. Farms soon followed. In controlled ponds, sea fish like golden sea bream, shrimp, and groupers were introduced. Monitoring systems tracked everything – temperature, oxygen, and flow. Even the sandstorms were no match. With forecasting tools in place, farmers could prepare in advance and protect their stock. Then came the real surprise. The survival rates weren't just acceptable, they were extraordinary. In many cases, over 95% of the fish fry adapted and thrived. Some even grew faster than in coastal conditions. The success wasn't just technical, it was emotional. For the first time, people saw proof that even the harshest landscapes could be made fertile. Not with luck, but with knowledge. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The Lakes That Learn to Feed Desserts are usually described as empty, but Xinjiang's deserts have learned how to feed people. At the center of this change are three lakes, Boston, Lop, and Sairam. Once overlooked, these water bodies have become vital to China's inland aquaculture. Take Sairam Lake, for example. In 1998, it had no fish, just cold, salty water. But that year, a local organization brought in northern whitefish from Russia. The early results were rough. The fry barely survived. Only three out of every 100 made it. Still, they didn't give up. In 2000, a $520,000 investment changed the game. It funded new labs, hired specialists, and built the technology to raise survival rates. Scientists studied everything – water flow, temperature, food, and growth cycles. Their microscopes stayed lit for hours as they tweaked each detail. Little by little, they cracked the code. By the end of the next decade, the survival rate climbed to 36%. Fish grew faster, stronger. Within a month, the fry reached over an inch and a half in length, something that used to take months. Northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, 
the furthest point from any coastline, is harvesting something unusual for the typical impression of a landrock region, seafood. Today, Sairam Lake produces over 400 tons of cold water fish each year. Local farmers now raise and sell fish too. Some are released into the wild lake, others go to farms. All of it began with one question, can a desert lake become a food source? The answer is yes. Shrimp, crabs, and a million tilapia. Not every farm in Xinjiang follows the same playbook. Some focus on shrimp, others on crabs. A few chase something bolder, such as lobsters, abalone, or even salmon. But one story stands out, a farm that chose simplicity. It chose tilapia. Tilapia isn't flashy. It doesn't sparkle like shrimp or grab headlines like salmon. But it's hardy, easy to raise, and above all, profitable. In a short time, one inland farm built 165 acres of ponds and filled them with over 650,000 tilapia. That's not just fish, that's a business. The result? A million-dollar operation carved out of the desert. Elsewhere, different success stories unfolded. In 2023, Boston Lake harvested over 4,000 tons of crabs. Salmon farms in the desert broke records too, with fish going from lake to plate in less than 24 hours. That's fresher than many coastal markets. These inland waters aren't just raising seafood, they're raising quality. Even the pickiest species, ones that need perfect salinity and temperature to spawn, are thriving here. Because now, the water isn't left to chance. It's engineered, monitored, controlled. What was once dry, dead land is now alive with ecosystems. The ponds echo with splashes. Fishermen walk dirt roads where sand once ruled. It's not just farming, it's a transformation. And in the middle of this transformation, Xinjiang's seafood industry is quietly rewriting the rules of what's possible. Pearls in the sand. Raising fish in the desert is already wild. But pearls? That sounds like a fairy tale. And yet, it's real. In the heart of Xinjiang, pearl farming is the newest twist in this unfolding story. It began quietly in 2022. At first, only researchers paid attention. But by 2023, investors were already placing their bets. Millions of pearl oysters were introduced into carefully prepared ponds. Why pearls? Because the conditions, strangely enough, are perfect. The wide temperature swings between day and night, the long, sunny days, the clean desert water. All these things help create pearls with deep luster and rare texture. It doesn't stop there. Waste from fish farms, normally a problem, has been turned into a resource. Using special systems, waste is broken down into amino acids and nitrates. These nutrients feed aquatic plants. The plants help purify the water. And the oysters? They thrive in that environment. In return, they also filter and clean the water, making the entire system more sustainable. This is nature's balance, rebuilt from scratch in a place where nothing should grow. If all goes well, the first pearls will reach the market in 2025. Pearls are born not in tropical lagoons, but in a sea of sand. That's what makes them valuable. That's what makes them unforgettable. The seafood brand of the desert. In just a few years, Xinjiang seafood has gone from curiosity to commodity. What started as an experiment now has a brand. Across Chinese cities, menus proudly list shrimp and crabs grown in the desert. At first, people laughed. Now, they ask for it. Why? Because it's clean. Far from industrial ports and polluted seas, Xinjiang's ponds are isolated. The water, though salty, is untouched by waste or oil spills. In an age where consumers worry about the ocean's growing pollution, especially after news like Japan's radioactive water release, this matters. Japan has started releasing treated radioactive water from the damaged Fukushima nuclear power plant into the ocean. Seafood from the desert feels safer, healthier, fresher. Online, it's blowing up. Videos of sand, fish, and glistening pearls rack up millions of views. Social media users call it a miracle harvest. They post about salmon raised under desert stars, about oysters blooming in artificial lakes. 
It's become more than food. It's a symbol of what technology can do. And it's profitable. One farm alone raised household incomes by up to $2,700 a year. More farms are popping up. More locals are joining in. As of 2023, over $54 million worth of aquatic products were sold through online platforms, an increase of over 16% from the previous year. In a region once forgotten, fish are now feeding families, creating jobs, and capturing national attention. From sand to salmon. There's something poetic about it, eating salmon raised in a place where rain barely falls. Yet in Xinjiang, that's exactly what's happening. Salmon farming in the desert has become a thriving, high-tech industry. Leading the charge is a company named Tanrun, which doesn't just raise fish, it redefines how it's done. Tanrun has created China's first semi-closed recirculating aquaculture system in the desert. It monitors everything, from oxygen levels to underwater waste. They even built robots to clean tanks automatically. This isn't a backyard operation, it's a futuristic farm nestled between sand dunes. The results are staggering. With a production capacity of 12,000 tons per year and the ability to hatch 40 million salmon fry annually, Tanrun is changing the game. Their salmon travels from pond to processing to plate in under a day. Fresh, safe, and ready to serve not just in China, but worldwide. They aren't alone. Across the region, over 3,000 people have found jobs in aquaculture. And it's not just fish anymore. Sea rice, pearls, aquatic plants, even barren soil has been reclaimed for farming. This isn't just a success story. It's a new way of thinking about deserts, not as empty land, but as untapped potential. With innovation and grit, Xinjiang is turning sand into food, into wealth, and into a future no one saw coming. This isn't just about fish or pearls or rice. It's about vision. A place once dismissed as lifeless now feeds thousands. In the heart of China's harshest desert, technology and determination have carved out a future that defies nature itself. Xinjiang's story is no longer one of isolation. It's one of innovation. And as the world searches for sustainable ways to grow food in a changing climate, the answers may not come from the coast, but from the sand. The desert didn't surrender, it evolved. And what once seemed impossible is now alive, thriving, and very, very real.